G'day, g'day. I don't have my big hat on today. It's a bit cold. I'm in the office at the moment and I want to show you some video footage, which I'm about to show you now. A few weeks ago, we were part of the Hastings Farm Gate Tour. There were 16 farms that opened their farm gates and did some tours on farm. And we, we did tours, um, two a day for three days. And right at the end, I got someone to grab a video camera. I said, just follow me around. Even if I'm not in shot, just keep it running and, and you can just sort of hear the audio. So this is a bit of a disclaimer. It's not the most amazing footage, but the tickets were sold out and people were like, can I still get tickets? So this is for you that either couldn't get tickets or you were too far away, you couldn't come. This was just a little taste of um, the, the tour which, which we ran here on the farm. The video goes for about 20 minutes, so I really hope you enjoy it the Farmgate Tour, and hopefully next year we can do uh, do it again and hopefully you can come along. So please enjoy this video from the 2021 Hastings Farmgate Tour here on our farm, the Port Macquarie Display Farm. Thank you. So this is um, the sort of the unofficial chicken caravan display farm. We've been here for about four months and we'll be moving our sort of chicken caravan head office sort of into this shed and this building. So a bit about chicken caravan, we have about 10 years ago we started, um, I started a, a pastured free range egg farm and you couldn't buy a mobile chicken shed on the market. I was happy to just go buy one but you couldn't so we had to build and develop and design our own and a lot of the design that went into that came from my experience working on other farms and seeing how inefficient their systems were to go we've got to make this efficient so everything of what we do is efficiency so we talk about regenerative agriculture and you keep cattle moving and sheep moving and pigs moving and and everything there's a lot of farms that are very inefficient and they're very time consuming so we try and develop systems and products to really um, make farming efficient so We'll, we'll, we'll go for a bit of a walk. I'll show you a bit of the journey of some of our, our engineering and our products and, and give you a few hints and tips along the way for um, yeah, sustainable egg production and a few other things in, in relation to uh, regenerative agriculture. So come out, we'll go for a walk. I'll first show you the Chicken Caravan 450 straight out the door here and I'll talk about this model. So this here is uh, our Chicken Caravan 450. So 10 years ago when we made our own uh, Chicken Caravan, it was at very similar dimensions, um, similar concept. Th this here is probably as automated as it comes at the moment, other than self-moving. We do have models that can self-move, they're not out yet. Um, so these doors open and close automatically. They can close down at night, open up in the morning. Uh, it's got a solar panel on the roof, it's got battery inside. The nesting boxes are what we call a roll away nesting box system. So they're on a slope, the chicken lays the egg, it rolls down onto a conveyor belt. So what you won't see in this system is 127 nesting boxes with straw and sawdust where we have to walk along and go, oh, broken egg, got to clean all that out and oh, we've got dirty eggs. I've been at farms and I've, I've done that and it was just not efficient. So that's why we've developed a roll away nesting box system and it's also got gates in there so you don't want the hen sitting in there at night making a mess. So at night the nesting boxes are closed and they're only open in the morning. The last automation feature is actually lights. This caravan's going down uh, south of Sydney down Batemans Bay this week. Uh, they've already got a chicken caravan 130 it's working for them, they're loving it, so they're now increasing their flock to add another 450 to their flock. So this got light, so in winter it can just increase the day length, which will improve production. So please come and have a look, come and see the system, you'll see it's got uh, a mesh floor, so the manure falls straight through. We don't need to get uh, tractors and bobcats to spread manure, we just take the chickens straight out to the paddock. We, we, we have a, a man section that the chickens can't get access to. We're out of the sun, we're out of um, any of the elements. And we simply have a hand winder and we can wind in the eggs. So we can collect about 400 eggs in about eight minutes. Uh, if we had another nesting box system and that was all straw and sawdust and we had to walk along and then fight all the chickens out of the nesting boxes, that eight minute job could turn into sort of a 38 minute job. 
and times that by every day, by 400 days or a couple of years, your labor costs are just sort of through the roof. So we've tried to develop the systems to keep labor at a minimum, but still make it comfortable for, for the chickens to be able to have access to grass and such. So this here is uh, an e-coop. We call it an e-coop because it's a bit of an everything coop based on the uh, design of it. It's very versatile. So it's got a PVC um, cover over it. This is the same PVC they use on semi-trailers. You've seen it when you go down the highway and they've got the big, big strips on the semi-trailers. Um, so come around and have a look. So this has got an open floor. It's got feeders built in. It's got water built in. These are meat chickens. Uh, and we've got the mesh side. So this is a grower coop. If you've got young chickens, you actually don't want them out and about free ranging because hawks, uh, goshawks and chicken hawks can take them. So actually for their protection, you want the, to have them in an enclosed system. But so we can still have them on grass, we've developed this uh, coop on skids. Now, one thing, if you look in all the corners, you've got water tanks, there's about 80 litres of water on board. When I talk about efficiency, I don't have to fill up each one of those. I fill up, I connect one hose to this corner and all of those are connected with float valves. So I connect one hose and it fills up all four of them simultaneously and then it's got float valves. So if one fills up a bit quicker, it'll shut that off and then uh, distribute the water to the other three until they're all full. We've got large capacity feeders at the front and the drinkers, so I don't have to clean out drinker bowls, we've got little bullet drinkers. So the chickens can only take water out, they can't put any dirt or rubbish into the water itself. Now these are meat chickens. Most farms that have a, a meat chicken operation on pasture, they have two pieces of infrastructure. They have the brooder, where they put the young chickens into, and then they have the grower coop. So at some point, at three weeks of age, they have to catch all the chickens from the brooder, put them in a chicken crate and transport them out to a grower coop. What you see here is also the brooder. So 50 metres back, there's actually a little pile of sawdust where they were brooding in. I ran an extension cord out to it and put a heat plate in there to keep them warm. When they were old enough, we simply disconnect that heat plate and started moving it forward onto grass. So I'm not shoveling out any brooders now. I'm not catching all the birds and transporting them to somewhere else in the farm. The brooder is the grower coop. So these are the things we try and bring to regenerative agriculture to make it more efficient by using our infrastructure. Um, so it's dual purpose. You're gonna see a couple more e-coops today. Uh, so obviously this one's set up for grower chickens. You could put um, layers or meat chickens in there. Uh, but it's very versatile. You can, you'll see another one that has nesting boxes um, and other features in there. This here is the Chicken Caravan 10. It's, it's suitable for 10 chickens. So how this came about, you've seen our Chicken Caravan 450. That's what we developed 10 years ago. It looked similar to what it does now. But then over time, people said, can you make it smaller? So then we made it one for 130 chickens. And then they said, can you make it smaller? So then we made it for, th for 30 chickens, which you're about to see. And then they said, can you make it smaller? Do you have, do you have a smaller model? So that we've developed the Chicken Caravan 10. We've been working on this for a number of months. We only launched this model about seven weeks ago. So I'll go through some of the features with you. Firstly, we tried to make it look cute. We want it to look awesome. So you can put it on the tow ball of your ride on lawnmower or quad bike to move it forward, but you can actually move it by hand. So we, we developed a nice little tow handle where you can simply pull it around by hand. The wheels are large enough so they're not going to sink into a hole. The door for the chickens, that's automated. So that automatically opens and closes, so you don't have to go out there and open and close. On the front here, We've got our drinker, it's clear, so I can instantly see how much water is in there. A another thing, I can just walk up to it and go, okay, I'm gonna be topping that up this afternoon or tomorrow morning. O on the other side, round the back, I'll, I'll show you here. That's the egg collection. 
So we've got roll away nesting boxes with the excluder gate so they're not going to be sitting in there at night and I can simply collect the eggs. So we've got cl clean, clean eggs in there. Underneath the unit we've got a feeder that's out of the rain and out of the weather and so I don't have to get in under there to try and fill up the feeder. This is where we fill it. We just fill it through the top and it just goes straight through. It's got a ceiling cavity in there so any hot air in the middle of summer is going to be drawn away from the, the chickens. The silver is going to reflect a lot of the heat but if that ceiling cavity gets too warm we've got thermostatically controlled exhaust fan will actually pull the hot air out so it'll keep the temperature in there nice and cool. So the, the fence of what you see that is our predator protection. We do also have automatic doors on our chicken caravans that open and close, but the fence really is our predator protection. So the, these fences are great quality, they're 1.2 metres tall, they're made in Germany and they work brilliantly. Now so one of the things I want to show you, and I've talked to before and I keep talking about the saving the six minutes. When you go get an energizer from the rural supply store, you can put on a star picket and it's made to go on a permanent fencing. It's not really designed to go on a movable system. So you need a post and you need an earth stake. So if you come over here, I'll show you what we've got. So we've got an energizer and that's the energizer you can buy. It goes on a star picket. But every time we need to move, we need to get a star picket and we need to get a hammer and we've got to move it forward. I did this presentation yesterday and it changed someone's life. I got an ag teacher from one of the schools and they said, oh my goodness, yeah, we've got star pickets and we've got a rammer and it's always somewhere else and they're sending students up and down on the ag plot. And I showed her this. So this here is the earth stake. It is the, the star picket and it's a slide hammer. So I can bang it out of the ground, I can bang it in. I'm never looking for that hammer. I'm never looking for that rammer that happens to be in the ute. Now it's on the quad bike, now it's on the buggy. It's all built in. And we just put our energizer straight on top there and it's all built in. So what, first thing she asked me goes, when are they available? <laughs> They're not available yet, but we're working on that. So there's some of the things when we're moving our livestock, we always want to keep our livestock moving to keep it, things clean, keep them green. Just by having an efficiency like that, it's going to save time. N now doing the chickens is a pleasure, not go, oh my goodness, I need to find, go buy another ram or another hammer. So this here is our chicken caravan 30. It's got, um, again, it's got its built-in feeder, which we can easily just fill in at the top. It's got 30 litres of water on board and the chickens can just drink out of these little, little drinkers. So I'm not cleaning out some dirty, muddy bowl. It's got the nesting boxes with the excluders. And to, to move, when it comes to moving the chicken caravan, I just I lift up this ramp and I undo this little chain. I just swing it around here. So I've got a little chain here and that, that acts as a brake when we're parked up. But because the wheels are large and they're wide, even over rough country, I can simply pull it around. If you really don't want to pull it around and you've got a quad bike and you want to use it, you can swing that out and that ring can go over your, the tow ball of your quad bike or your ride on lawnmower. So you can just, you can pull it forward. That folds away. And then when we're finished moving, that chain engages the brake, so, the, so it's not gonna roll. And also we don't have our handle sitting on the ground to get chook manure on or trip over it as I'm walking past. So simple to move, and I just pull that, that ramp out. So, so this, this e-coop here is set up for layers. So this has got the automatic nesting box. It's got the feeders and drinkers. So this is different to the um, our chicken caravans with the wheels and axles. So this one's only really suitable for uh, flat ground, but it's got its built-in feeders and it's got its built-in drinkers. And this is what I was talking about before with the e-coop. It's very versatile. So with that grower, I could actually take the mesh sides off, put some nesting boxes on it, and now it's set up for growers. What we're about to see soon is a setup for like little piglets. So it's very versatile what you can do. 
So, th so this here was the first e-kit we made and we wanted it to be versatile. So it was obviously made for chickens, but right at the moment I've got three piglets in there. So we're, I've just moved some perches around and, and disconnected the actual hoses. So I've still got the water storage for filling up the, the water dish for the pigs. But now what was a chicken coop is now for pigs. So this is what we wanted. For, for some farms, they might want to put ducks in it and then next season brood some chickens in it or then do some layers or then do some pigs. So that's what we wanted with the e-coop, have a versatile unit that if your mar marama dog's having pups, you could use it for that. So it's a very versatile unit, which we've got the pigs. Because it's a mobile system with these pigs, I can get them to do the work. So I can move them as fast or as slow as I like. I could say, I want a veggie garden there, let's leave them there to dig up. Or I just want the manure and a little bit of disturbance and let's keep moving them fast. Let, let's move them every single day. So with all of the livestock, I always say you want to keep them moving because it'll get rid of disease. It'll, it'll break cycles of things. And my best example of that are the wildebeest of Africa. There's no one out there giving them this chemical or that chemical or spraying some super phosphate here and like round up. The system works, but the animals are moving. Always keep the animals moving and you'll keep them healthy. So they can be in here for a few days, move them on. Move, and having sort of diversity. So we've got chickens and the pigs will do a different job on the farm. Behind you here, we're not livestock, but we've got some trees in. Someone once said to me, the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago and the second best time now so um, I didn't want to wait sort of 20 years and go I should have planted some trees so I've got some trees in are they in the right spot I don't know I'll find out in 20 years are they the right type of tree don't know but I'd rather plant them and then five years from now to go oh look I actually did that I've been to a lot of farms 10 years ago I'm like hey you should plant some trees along that laneway so your cattle walking up to the dairy aren't in the full sun oh yeah we should do that go back 10 years later they haven't done it yet I'm like if you just put anything in even if it was the wrong tree you'd have sort of a 10 year old tree so um, I'll, I'll walk down now to the to the rabbits it's got a slatted floor that run in the direction in which we pull them so the the rabbits can still get access to grass but they can't burrow out they can still dig a little bit maybe sort of um, the depth of say your finger or something, but they can't dig a, a massive hole where you're gonna break, break your ankle. I like them to be able to dig because that's actually them making a mini compost pile because they're mixing a bit of grass with a bit of roots, with a bit of soil and a bit of manure, and that's now sitting in the paddock. So that's actually improving the grass and the soil and the systems. Most commercial rabbits, if you went to the butcher today and bought a rabbit, it would be um, farmed in a shed, in a cage, which is about waist height with a mesh floor. Those rabbits will never see grass, they'll never see soil. And we thought, we want to be able to do rabbits in a different way, of still have them out, out in the paddock, but still have an efficient system. So the water tanks in there, they're 10 litres, so I don't have to fill them up every day. They've got 10 litres of water. They've got large capacity feeders. They can get access to the grass and dig a bit and eat a bit. And they've got the, the little shelves in there so they can get up at, off, the, um, off the ground. The lid that covers all of it provides plenty of shade and plenty of shelter. So they, these rabbit coops, it's nothing, we haven't put them into full production yet, but we still want to tweak and develop uh, this system because we think it's a, a fantastic system to keep rabbits sort of on pasture to um, yeah, grow, grow protein. Especially for farms, they might not be big enough to have like cattle and sheep. This could be just a really great source for them.